trajectory dictates destiny. Perfect. Based on the trajectory that you are taking or you are on, it shall dictate your destination, where you shall land. A couple weeks ago when this message started, too, I was watching and um, uh, uh, Tiger Wood was giving a talk, you know, based on, you know, um, the, what trajectory you will use based on how far he wants the ball to go or how much he wanted to stop. Amen? I'm very much sure, you know, um, with, with, with um, you know, the Lord was showing me in Christianity, it is very important we understand the trajectory that Christianity is placed upon or set upon. Amen? We know the Lord built us on the rock of Gibraltar, which is on His Son. And to understand the trajectory of His Son, we needed to understand what is he, what was He doing and where is He going or, where, or what does He continue to do. So we had looked at Luke 19, 10, where Jesus said, I come to seek and to save those that were lost. So the trajectory that he, why he came from heaven, he said, I came to see. If not man look, looking for him, is he came looking for man that was created in the image of God according to Genesis chapter 1, verse 26 to 28. Man was created in the image of God, in the image and likeness of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and given dominion. But then he get lost. He doesn't know what he was created after or what he was created for. Four, which is what makes him so susceptible to so many things that he gets involved in. Anyone who do not have a good sense of who he belongs to, which dictate their characteristic, or what they're do, you know, what the purpose why they're here, amen, which will dictate their behavior, where they're going, you'll find, you know, they, they take on many shapes and misrepresent themselves and they create a great deal, and typically because they do not know where they belong. Amen. And because of this, you know, he was constantly seeking when we look at Luke 5, 30, 31, amen, those that need to be saved. And he goes, you know, once I bring back my children that are recreated in the image, he said, wisdom, amen, shall vindicate itself. You will see why God created man in his image and why I came to seek and find him. I believe like any, any creature or any, any, any one of God's creation in its right um, state, right place, and state, it is most excellent. You know, my brother, I was saying, he got water is a wonderful thing if it remains in the place water belongs to. But if water is displaced, <laughs> you know, it should be in the sea, and it get on the land, etc., it can wreak havoc. But vice versa, human beings that are created in the image, you know, of God, when God made man, he said man is very good. But when man is displaced, no longer in Eden, a spot within God's presence, no longer under the guidance and the interplay and the relationship with God, he becomes quite a destructive force. Amen? So anything that is right element, you know, um, do what it's supposed to do very well. But when it's displaced, it can be quite, quite um, destructive. So Jesus, I came to seek them, amen, and I came to save them, and you shall see wisdom will be vindicated. That in essence, you'll see, God did not make a mistake. This morning I was talking to the church and we were talking in, in, in the book of um, Numbers, chapter 16, Moses remind God, he said, you are the father, amen, um, of all spirit. You are the God that give all flesh breath. Amen. So God doesn't make a mistake. We, we know in, in Genesis chapter 9 when God made man because man was displaced away from him. You know, you regret making man. You go, why did I give him spirit? Mm. Because every imagination and thoughts is evil. But this is what happens when something is not in its right what? Element. It's mm. this place. It's what happened. If I take a, you know, a bird that's supposed to be in the here in the land and I put him on the water, you'll find you have some weird, you know, adverse challenges because he's displaced from where he should be. Amen? Yeah. So Jesus said, I came to seek and I came to find him and save him. Amen. And bring him back. You know, I, and I love the way um, okay. we did it as we continue this process. I just want to quickly, I think it's 1 Corinthians, I believe, chapter 6. You know, part, part of he's seeking us and finding us and saving us. Hallelujah. The Bible said in verse 13, 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 13. Food is intended for the stomach, amen, and the stomach for food, amen, Perfect. 
But God will finally end the function of both and bring them to nothing. The body is not intended for sexual immorality, but is intended for the Lord. And the Lord is intended for the body. So everything has a specific place where it belongs and what, why, why it was created, why it was given. God gave man body for his own spirit. The body was not just created to have food and have this and that. You don't know. The reason I, 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 I give you, amen, let, he said, let's create man in our own image. I created a man, the spirit man, and I give the spirit man a body. The body is created for the spirit man. When man fall, the spirit man became incapacitated, no longer can operate. The body is left without a spirit man. So the soul uses the body. I said, well, the body can do this and the body can, but it's not why the body was created. The body was created to house the spirit man, which is created in the image of God. It is the spirit man. <coughs> Amen? When God said, let's create man, and then he gave the spirit man, and then he formed the body out of the clay. For the spirit man, he gave him a house, a place to dwell in. Amen? So when Jesus come to seek, he said, now I've come to save the spirit man that get trapped after the fall, amen, and sanctify him. I've come to clean him off, amen. He said, I've come to save the spirit man. I come to seek and save the spirit man and sanctify him. Then do what? Raise him, amen. The Bible said to be saved, sanctified, and raised, and what? Amen. Again. And that part that you again show it was it was already in place, but then something happened. This is the fall. When Satan tricked man, he got the spirit man to become out of sort, fall out of place, to become displaced. That the body that was made for him to do spiritual things start to be done, just used for all physical things. Amen. So the soul start to live. Once the spirit man is not there to guide the body anymore, the soul start to live according to the body. Things you can see, things you can touch. So Jesus said, I have come to save the spirit man that is trapped in this clay house now. Amen. I've come to sanctify and clean him. And I've come to raise him again to be what, what, he, what God intended him to be. Amen. To have dominion in the realms over the earth, over the water, and over the here. So you are saved, sanctified, amen, and raised again to proper status. To operate accordingly. Now what we need to get clear on as we look at Jesus who came to save, sanctify, and raise. Where is he raising you for or to? Now in Ephesians 2.6 we know, this is how we talk about a couple weeks ago. If for a Christian, heaven is not a place but a person. How do I get you into the place heaven? It's put you in the person what? Jesus. Remember I said, you are in Jesus at the right hand of God. Amen? So you don't get to heaven without Jesus, the person. Not, be, not even because he's saving, you have to be what? In the person. Amen? It's like Jesus said, I am the truth. Not the, the, the truth. He said, no. You can't get the truth without me because me and the truth is one. So you have to get the person. Amen? So vice versa. So Jesus came to seek what God had, re what had created. In Ephesians 2, 6, he said, you're recreated in the image and likeness of Jesus. He came to sanctify them, and he came to raise them again. Where are they raised to? Where is a Christian raised to? Is it just at the right hand of God? But well, that's, that's, that's true. That's, that, that part is true. They are raised to the right hand of God, that they're in Jesus. But Jesus, amen, raised them to that place for a specific reason, and God created them for a specific reason. And we need to understand what, what, what's that reason, or what's the trajectory? Why did Jesus save us? Why did he come all the way from heaven to save us? And why does he sanctify us? Why does he need to clean us? What's the purpose of this? What's the purpose of being regenerated? What's the purpose of being sanctified? And why is he raising me again? To go where? Or to do what? Amen? In the name of Jesus. And what's this wisdom that he wants to be vindicated to show that the being he raised was worthy of raising? Amen? And it was exactly in alignment to the will of God and the purposes of God. In the name of Jesus. And the Bible teaches in Ephesians, even the angel, amen, through this raising of the body of Christ, is now being enlightened of what God is doing. God, many say, wisdom is being seen. Hallelujah. So we're going to look at the trajectory the church is on. That is built on Jesus and in Jesus. Amen. And make sure we understand it, we are clear on it. 
and we stay on it and we do not get derailed by things that look similar or familiar but are not on the same trajectory, not going the same place. Amen? And so forth. We talk a little bit, you know, as, uh, as we uh, will expand a little bit more. As I said, in Islam, they're looking to get to paradise. It's a very different paradise from what we are trying to get to. Amen? They're, they're looking for a, a, a paradise, as we said, perpetual wine and intercourse and, you know, perpetual virgins and, and young boys serving old men and so forth. Not what we are looking for. Not where we have been set upon. And if you look for that, you will miss the mark because it's not what God promised or where He's leading you according to his word, in the name of Jesus. You're on a different path, you're on a different trajectory, we'll end up in a different place. So I want to pick it up back this morning, amen, to make sure that we, the church, are walking where wisdom will be vindicated. Amen? Where it will be actualized. What God intended from the creation, why, what he intended in the regeneration, what he intended in sanctifying you and raising you, why he gave you his Holy Spirit is accomplished, and you don't end, end up fighting against the will of God because you do not, you're not clear on what it is. The Bible teaches in um, Hebrews 13, 21, amen? 20 and 21, God has equipped you to do his will. What is this equipping? And what is his will? Let's see if we can become very clear with that process and how it's accomplished. Amen? Mm -hmm. I want to pick it up this morning. We're going to pick it up from, um, where did we stop? We, we did that. Yeah. We stopped. We had stopped at Ephesians 2, 6. So let's pick it up this morning. Let's pick it up at um, the Gospel of John, chapter 15. We're going to look at uh, verse 12. The Gospel of John. Amen? Chapter 15, verse 12, in the name of Jesus. We see, you know, we had, we had looked at um, John 17, 3, where, where the Lord said, you know, if you know to know the Father personally and to know me is to know eternal life. He said, I give you, you know, I've saved you and give you eternal life. Nobody will be able to take your life again from you. Amen? We, 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 we knew also from, from the Gospel of John, you, you, you know, he, he said, he said not, nobody can snatch anything out of my hands or the Father's hands. So what I have raised and sanctified, no one can take from me. Amen? Let's pick it up at John chapter 15. The Lord who came and saved us and sanctify us and raise us. Where did he raise us? What did he raise us into? Now the trajectory the Lord places on, and I'll just pick it up from verse 11, at verse 10. In verse 10 of chapter 15, the Lord said, If you keep my commandments, so let's see what is his commandment, my, my directive. If you continue to obey my instruction, you will abide in my love, amen, and live on in it. So he said, to, you'll abide in my love. Again, it's personal. You say, I'm the person, you continue to follow my commandment and my instruction, you will continue to abide in my love. Amen? So again, his love is not separated what? from him. The Bible says anyone who is in love is in God and God is in him. They're in separate. God says you can't be in love because, and not be in me because love is what? Me. Yeah. I'm the person. If you get in there, you got into the person. Yeah. Amen? So verse 10 he said, you will abide in my love and live on in it. Just as I obey my Father's commandments and live on in His love. He said, I'm forever in God's love because I abide His commandment. And you'll see the commandment and the trajectory is to be in love. The Bible said in John 3, 16, the famous scripture, Because God so loved the world that He came and what? Save it, sanctify it, and raise it back to what? Love. My point is, as you're going to see, forget about my point, what the Lord is saying. Man was made to be in love with God. As God is in love with him. This is why God made him. He was very pleased of the man that is created in him. God created a, a, a species, human being, to love him. Amen? And, and for him to love. And where you are re-established and lift up at the right hand, it's into God's love. 
the place to abide. And the only place you will not feel this place and able to operate effectively is when you are awake. In the love of God. Anytime you come out of Jesus, come out of the love of God, you will find you start to feel out of sorts. You'll start to malfunction. Defects will start to show up. It's why as soon as Adam, he got, he got, I heard you and I hide there, I was naked. He got, how do you know, how did you get out to a place that you could feel naked? How do you get out to a place that you feel vulnerable, exposed? Do you understand this process? You know, one of the most wonderful, um, as human beings, we have friends and, you know, even when you first marry somebody, etc. You'll find when most people with people, whether it's with friends or with, you know, when you first come together, they try to put their best self forward, you know, um, they, you know speak properly and think properly and act properly, etc. But to be free and able to truly enjoy, you have to be able to operate without all these, um, uh, what, what's the word I'm looking for? All, all these like fake facade where you feel acceptable just for what you are. You feel accepted, you know, and it's where people truly get a chance to see you and you really get to, you know, a chance to experience life the way it was be. So God said the only place, he said, love cover up multitudes of what? Sin, offense. You see, the only place you are going to ever get to be you properly the way I made you to be is when you are in what? You're in love. Where, when you're in a place where you don't feel judged, where you feel accepted. It is a rare re relationship in this world when you're with people that you don't have to feel what? Guarded. You don't feel they'll judge you or, or condemn you or they'll attack you. You just feel free just to be you. It is a, it a, it is a rare thing when in God is exactly where you want. He said, I have seek you out and sanctify you and place you in my love and I want you to stay in my love. This is where you will not feel displaced and where you will feel the most effective. Amen. Where you'll be the most effective. The enemy tries to pull you out of this place because he know where you are what? At your best. Yeah. He know the place where you can yatir, where you can truly soar and be effective. So his job is to try to get you out of there at all costs. Amen. All costs possible. So the Lord said, Amen. As I stayed in my father love, Amen. I did not get displaced. The only time he got displaced is when he took on the sins from the world. And the Bible says your sins is what separates you what? From your God. So I'll say to you to separate man from God. Because God hates sin. He said, I just got to get him to uh, have enough sin. If not God stopped loving him, but he no longer can abide in the place of love. And where Jesus has come and atoned for our sins, amen, and sanctify us and set us back as a stone into God, what? The Bible says we are precious stone into God's love. So this is the trajectory you are on, which will dictate your characteristic or should dictate your characteristic. And part of the reason the Lord gave you the Holy Spirit to keep you in, in this place, operating from this place. Amen? Verse 10 said, I read verse 10, right? Verse 11, yes. Yeah. Now you may not say, I have told you these things that my joy and delight may be in you. He said, I want to enjoy regenerating you. I want to enjoy saving you, sanctifying you, and replacing you. He says, so I'm telling you all these things. Stay in the love. Amen. I've placed you in the love. I stayed in the love. Look why. He has a purpose of doing this. Amen. I have told you these things that my joy, he's speaking from his own perspective now, and delight may be in you. Amen. And that your joy and gladness, amen, may be a full measure. You're not enjoying life partially, but fully. You'll be at your full potential, amen, and complete, amen, overflowing. Verse 12 said, this is my commandment. He said, I told you these things so I can be fully happy, enjoy the fullness of you, and you can have a full experience, amen, of love and joy. This is my commandment, that your, amen, that you love one another, just as I have loved you. So he said, the instruction, the commandment, based on where I have placed you, that I have for you, is for you to love what? Each other. He said, you need to stay where I have placed you. Apart from me, you can do what? Nothing. You absolutely will be displaced and start to malfunction. Will not be effective if you're outside of my love. You must stay in my love. 
That my joy can be complete and so your joy can be complete and the commandment, the instruction I have for you, the trajectory that you are going to be on into eternity is to love one another. He said, in doing this, wisdom will be vindicated. Everybody will know what? You belong to me and I have saved you and I have sanctified you and I have raised you. When we fail to love each other, somehow we have become displaced and wisdom cannot vindicate. Somehow, in truth, this is what happened. Somehow you are becoming unsanctified. When you are failing to love God and each other, what's happening, somehow you are becoming severed. Not objectively, subjectively. Objectively, you are placing God love. But the way you are believing, thinking, speaking, acting, viewing, Amen? It's becoming skewed, snared. It's one of the reasons we just pray that the enemy will not be able to ensnare you in any way. You will not be able to change your belief or your thinking or your seeing or your understanding of what it is to be in love God. The ability to love God and love each other. This is very, very important. If he's able to snare this or to gain inroad or activities in this area, you're going to have trouble. Because you're not going to be able to fulfill the command of the Lord. Your trajectory will start to be what? Change. It's one of the reasons the Lord, part of our kingdom institution, is forgiveness and different things like that. And to keep you in love where you can overcome a multitude of sin and offense of others. We, we look at it when we look at um, uh, Numbers this morning, 16. The Israelites are trying to stone and, and speak it out against Moses and Aaron. Yet, when they're about to be wiped out because they love themselves, who is the one running and fighting for them? Perfect. It is Moses and Aaron. They're not holding grudge against them and getting upset and becoming ensnared that they cannot operate from the place of love. Love allows you, amen, to lay down your life for others and so forth. Without love, you might have the idea, but you don't have the right sentiment to execute it, the right guiding force or propelling or motivating factors or force to accomplish this process. Amen? So Jesus said the trajectory where I have saved you into and the trajectory that I'm moving you through, amen, it's love. It's to love one another. He said, this is the command. This is the placement. This is why I came to seek you, save you, sanctify you, and raise you. I've raised you back into the stature or the operable state that allows you to be efficient and to excel in, which is love. A Christian trajectory to land in the destination or to coordinate, I should say, more accurately with the destination. Because we don't fight to a place, we fight from a place. You must understand this. This is very careful. Remember I said earlier when I started, for a Christian, heaven is not a place, it's a person. We are fighting from the person, not to the person. Does this make sense? The Bible says you have been seated at the right hand of God in Jesus. But equally, amen? You have to put on the full armor of God and stand against the enemy when he tries to advance. So we just stand from the place where you can't come up here. This is a love feast. This is a loving of God and his people. So anything that is not loving can't come in. So we don't stand back and let him just come in and bring his crazy in. When he tries to invade it, we stand and go, step off. Does this make sense? But once he step off, we sit again in love. So we, amen, we fend off from where we are. We're not fighting to get into it. Someone has already come and seek us and brought us into it. When we look at Revelation 3.20, Jesus said, I've come and I've knocked, and I come in and sit and dine with you, and I take you up with me. Does this make sense? Amen? So we sit, or we are seated, or positioned, situated in love, and we stand up if anything try to take away that love or to displace us out of that love. Or if anyone try to bar anyone from coming in, into that love that God has called into that love. Do you understand it? So that's how you fight for love. You're situated in love, and anytime you stand up, it's because you're stand up to become a representative of what? Love. Perfect. Does this make sense? You stand up for the command. Because God will have issue with you if you were situated and enjoying all the benefits of love. Notice what you're just read. The full measure of your joy if you don't say anything, if someone try to take it away, disturb it, snare it, have activities that is not conducive of love, and you don't say nothing. You don't bear testimony to the fullness of the joy. 
Does this make sense? So this is where you operate from. Anytime you're not operating from this, your trajectory is wrong. You're gonna, you're missing your destination, amen, that you're operating in and from. Perfect. See, too, like, I, I think I'm getting the message a little clearer now. The Bible says, like, we don't know what exactly we're going to be like. But if we stay on the trajectory, we're going to find out. Mm -hmm. We'll be exactly like him. So, obviously, the trajectory and the goal or the destiny has to be compatible. Of course! So, anything... Anything that keeps us in love or increasing our love, we know for yes. sure this is the trajectory, even though I'm not exactly sure of where right. what the final what does that look like in a full picture. Right. Absolutely. You see, because you are placed in it. We see important in it, but we are placed in it. Right. And Jesus said, by the way, you love each other. Right. Everybody will know which trajectory you're on. Right. You may which not, kingdom you come from. You may not have the the, no, the foresight of the vision of Isaiah or, no. you know, God may not have shown you, but at least you know the characteristics of the trajectory. Yes. You're held accountable for that. Yes. Yeah. You are held accountable, amen, based on where you have been placed. You're up, are we going to learn how to stay in that place? So what they, they, as we get later on into the, deeper into the series, it is very important to know how to operate in love. As you'll see, it's not about you tried in order. In fact, it's the opposite. It's by you learning to surrender into where you have been placed and what's guiding you in the principle and the way of love. Amen? And how to stand in love. Now, when we look at 15, as I said, 15 from 8 through 10, that, or, or, or from 9 through 12, as we just read. Amen? Um, um, actually, let's read one more verse. Verse 13 said, No one has greater love no one has shown stronger affection, amen, than to lay down, give up his own life for his friends. Jesus said there's no greater love than someone who loves someone so much that they can give up themselves, their life, their likes, their needs, their want, for someone that is very important for them. These are the strongest characteristics. We want to make sure, amen, that the destiny God placed us into and called us into we are operating in that trajectory. We are on the same path, the same line. Not getting distracted, distracted. Confused. Making Christianity something that it is not. Perfect. And one of the first and the closest place, but you'll see the Lord will stretch us more than that. Yeah? The Lord said, the first command, if you can't get this one, you're not going to get the other one actually. Amen. It's to love one another. This is the first command. Amen. You need to learn to love one another. Those that are right there with you. Amen? He said this is the first and most basic one that you're going to need to do. Let's look at chapter 13, verse 35. Gospel of John still. Same, same principle. <clears throat> Amen? So the commandment in 12, he said, I want you to love one another. This is the command, this is the instruction. And he said, the reason when you do this, I am so overjoyed. And you're going to find your joy is being complete. You're so happy when you're able to do that. Because you're not operating at someone displaced. Amen? The chapter 13, verse 35, read. Amen? Actually, let's read 34 and 35 again. 13, mm -hmm. Amen. Chapter 13, 34 and 35. I give you a new commandment Perfect. that you should what? Love one another just as I have loved you. So you too should what? Love one another. First turn of Christ there. By this characteristic, by this characteristic shall all men, not so, by this characteristic shall all men know that you are my disciple. Even if you can't love each other, people don't need to guess who you are. One thing they can tell for certain, you're not what? Mine. Mine. Because you know, all of my disciples that I have saved, sanctified, and raised, have been raised, or elevated, or something in them has been built up that they can operate what? In love. He said, is it how much you know? Did he go, based on the level of knowledge you have of the Bible, and how much you go to church, and how much you can pray, people will know it belongs to me. No. No, 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 no. The Pharisees was amazing at knowing the Bible. 
No, you go by the way you love each other. The way you walk in love, how familiar you are in love, how much you don't get displaced out of love, anybody come in contact with you will go up. These are the children of God. These are the co heirs with Christ. These are the children of the kingdom. We belong to the kingdom of love. Amen? Yeah? So this is the command I give to you. And by this command, when you fulfill it, men shall know, amen, yeah, that you are my disciple. If you love one another. Perfect. If you keep on showing love among yourself. He said, if you can, no, wait, no, this, no, this is easier said than done. God commands that what he wants, thank God he puts the provision in place. If you try to do this love, I am telling you, you will fail miserably. The key word is a new command. <laughs> the old command is fulfilled by Jesus, who now, so now he can fulfill the new command. Yeah. If you try to go, but I'm going to love up an all Christian, the amount of offense they'll do like Moses and the congregation, you will feel miserably. You still love all. You won't even have to love the few, actually. <laughs> no. Sooner or later when someone steps on your toe. Yeah. The same one that came to seek you, that save you, sanctify you, and raise you, must live for you. <laughs> the same one that gives up his life, that gives you his life, that made you holy, Amen. And raise you. This is Galatians 2.20. For I've been co-crucified with Christ. In his own